Okay, so we are ready to celebrate the luck of the Irish on this St. Patrick's Day. Brendan is not on set today. Right. He, nor is he in Ireland. No. But we did send him over to Providence to catch up with our favorite local history buff, Bob Berg. Top of the morning to you. Well, good morning, guys. And before we get into what's happening here, I just would like to say congrats to Tony Petrarca. Today's forecast, cloudy with a chance of a Hall of Fame induction. Come on, guys. How great is that? Fantastic stuff for the one and only Tony Petrarca. And I'll never forget when I was in fifth grade, Tony actually came to our classroom and it was just as exciting to me then as it is now to remember all these years later. So he's the absolute best and we want to wish him nothing but the most massive congratulations on this most worthwhile accomplishment. Now, as if enough about Tony, he's the man of the hour, but it is St. Patrick's Day and how fitting guys were here downtown on the banks of the Providence River. And look, timing is everything. It what just happens to be right across the street a Guinness truck making a very special delivery right there. And I wonder if it's delivering to anyone in particular, maybe our special guest that is supposed to be here running late, tardy as always. Here he is, the one and only Mr. Bob Burke. Hello, sir. Sorry. I'm sorry. I drove the truck down because I knew you were going to be thirsty. And you parked it and illegally. I parked it, well, semi-legally. And uh, I'm sorry, I don't even have my tie tied. I'm a little tardy this morning. I apologize. Well, you are nothing if not a fashion maven preparing for St. Patrick's Day here. And I know when the two of us get together, it usually is an exercise exercise in frivolity and nonsense and silliness. We love celebrating on St. Patrick's Day, but we need to be mindful of some history today, don't we? Absolutely. First of all, is my tie straight? Yes. Okay. Isn't that a nice tie? It is. Yeah, it's my St. Patrick's Day time. You may notice that it's got some wreaths and Christmas trees on it. Uh, that's because I bought it from a Greek Jew uh, named Harvey Lapides at Harvey's Limited. He had an African-American manager. I was driving to my French restaurant on St. Patrick's Day many years ago and realized I had no green. So I wheeled in and I said, you got to give me a St. Patty's Day tie. He says, don't have any, but I got some Christmas ties on sale. And now every year I wear my Christmas St. Patty's Day. And nothing says Merry St. Patty's Day, Laheim, Schlancha, like this tie. Well, you. There's history. There there it is. You're full of I stories. But really, you know, and it looks great on you as always. Let's talk about really where we are downtown here and the significance of this location. This, again, as so many times in Rhode Island, people go, wow, I drive by there all the time. I didn't know the history. This Irish Famine Memorial is really extraordinary. Uh, we see over here our statue and uh, the Irishman is looking longingly out to sea uh, or into the trees. They got to cut those down. Um, and of course, we see here the very sad part of the memorial, uh, the remembrance of the many who died in the Irish famine, hence the name Irish Famine Memorial that occurred in the mid 1800s. And um, the, the importance of it being on the water is, is this water is really the roadway, the pathway from Ireland to uh, a happier life here in the United States, in America, where they got refuge uh, from a really terrible situation in in, uh, in Ireland that was going on at the time, which we'll talk more about later. But um, this is just such a great place. You see many of the Irish, Dr. Conley, Joe Garrahy, uh, the many Irish who were inscribed here, who got together to create this wonderful memorial. And people really need to be cognizant of the fact that they can come down here and really experience that history. It's a lovely memorial. There are places to sit here along the river and contemplate. And the river's beautiful right at this spot. This is right where water fire ends, so people know it's, uh, I'd like to say, it's uh, the end of a street that a famous French restaurant's on, <laughs> but people will know it better by saying it's right across from Hemingway's. <laughs> that's right, and it's Hemingway's, not Hemingway's. That's one of my hang-ups. Yes, that's right, right. because that was Ned Grace's uh, father-in-law uh, who helped him out, and he was a Hemingway, not a Hemingway. He's full of knowledge. He's our friend, Rhode Island historian extraordinaire, Mr. Bob Burke. Good to have you with us today. Hey, it's great to be here with you, and uh, thank you, Tony Petraca, for the Irish weather. You know, if Tony was an Irish uh, weatherman, he would be right 100% of the time, because in Ireland, if you say it's going to be cloudy, misty, rainy, and gray, you're right every day. <laughs> That's right. We're going to have more with Bob from uh, here in downtown Providence as our morning rolls on here on the St. Patrick's Day edition of The Roadshow. Back to you. Welcome back, everybody. Today, everyone is Irish, but did you 
you know that Providence has a rich Irish, her Irish heritage? Brendan is over in the Creative Capital this morning learning all about it with our local history buff, Bob Burke. Good morning again, Brendan. Good morning once again, Will. That's right, we are here in downtown Providence learning all about the connection of St. Patrick's Day and, you know, history down here uh, in the creative capital, as you said. And Bob Burke is joining us once again. Hello again, my friend. Hey, Brendan. Fancy seeing you here. But, you know, we are learning so much about the significance of this area right here, and we've meandered over to the Rhode Island Irish Famine Memorial, and really we can learn everything we need. It should be somber, we should be open-minded, and we really should learn about what this is, shouldn't we? Yeah, and I think, you know, one of the things that's important is, is, is that St. Patrick's Day is not just a day of celebration to drink beer and have a good time. It's all about that, that's true, but it commemorates something very important. And here in the memorial, one of the things that I think is great is a lot of times parents, if they want to bring their kids and stuff, they feel like, gosh, what do I know about this? Uh, but I'm going to, and the whole story of the Irish uh, migration from Ireland to Rhode Island is told both in pictures where you see the Irish here uh, on the lands uh, starving trying to find food the ships called the coffin ships so many people died on them uh, that came across the water uh, the families themselves uh, that you see depicted and then of course how the Irish uh, made their way in America uh, you know, a shovel in hand, digging the railroads and the canals, being laborers, and finally progressing up, uh, you see, uh, uh, dressed up there in a nice jacket, uh, and, and you really see how the Irish came and how they rose and how they became part of, of America, of, of a whole new country. And that's what we celebrate today. And the best part is you don't need to read a book <laughs> in order to do this. It is all written out. You know, the Irish love words. That's right. <laughs> and it's all written out. So don't worry about you don't know enough about Irish history. Come on down, read it with your kids, uh, visit here today, and then head out later tonight for a, a nice pint and a, and a good meal of corned beef and cabbage. And appropriately articulating here, you know, paying tribute to the immigrant descendants who generation after generation have so greatly enriched the life of America in general and of Rhode Island in particular. That really says it all doesn't it? Yeah, it, re it really does. And I think, you know, you and I having, uh, you know, some Irish heritage ourselves, the Burks, the Rorks, the Healy's Feelys, which I come from, the Kirby's, which you come from, uh, you know, it's a special day for us and uh, uh, one that I was really glad to be able to be here to share with you. Right. In this whole area, Bob, there's so m there are so many opportunities to learn, not just the things we're seeing here today, but there are just, you could really do your own walking tour, couldn't you? In the space of about two football fields, we have uh, a memorial to families that have lost young children. We have the brand new uh, memorial to those soldiers from Rhode Island who gave their lives in Beirut. We have the Irish Famine Memorial. As we go across the river, we have the World War I Memorial, the World War II Memorial. We have the Holocaust Memorial, Korean War Memorial, the W3R Memorial to the French. Uh, so if you just come to this one little tiny area, you can take in literally centuries of history at one beautiful memorial after another. Yeah, really something that we should all take in and experience to learn a little something. Uh, we can't thank you enough for joining us. And a little later, we're going to have, uh, you're going to have a quiz for me, aren't you? Yes, and uh, we've got some trivia for you. Not trivial, some trivia. All and right. we're going to have some fun with that because I know you love quizzes. The tables will be turned. Uh, no Kirby quiz today. The Bob Burke quiz, <laughs> he'll be testing me a little later. We'll have some fun in our final segment. But uh, we're thrilled that he's with us today. And we're thrilled that you guys are here as well. More from downtown Providence in a bit. Back to you. All morning we've been celebrating St. Patrick's Day, talking all things Irish, making drinks, corned beef and cabbage, checking in live from Ireland and checking in also with Brendan, who is live in Providence, sharing a little bit of history, Irish history that we have right here. Brendan, how's it going? It's going well, Michaela. That's right. Uh, Gabe got the Ireland assignment, but I'm right here in downtown Providence, which is just as good as far as I'm concerned. I'm happy to be here. Your two favorite oversized leprechauns join you once again. It is I, Brendan Kirby, and of course, Rhode Island historian, Mr. Bob Burke. Good morning once again, sir. Hey, good morning. And I don't know if you noticed, but a beer truck just pulled up across the river. We're really on a parade of beer trucks here this morning. They knew we were Saint here. Majesty. That's right. But let's get right to it. Yep. Ocho viewers know how much I love quiz. Will and Michaela, you, sir, today, get ready, ladies and gentlemen. Bob Burke has prepared a St. Patrick's Day quiz for yours truly. 
and this is the prize if you can win it. So yeah, let's so hope nice you get them right. Your hands this is all Irish. over it. Irish so good. <laughs> Why well, are the Irish called Hibernians? Because the Irish hibernate all winter and come out on St. Paddy's Day when if they see their shadow or if they don't, they go back into a pub for the rest of the year. Or number two, because Hibernia was the Latin name given to Ireland by the Romans. Which is it? I would have gone with A, but I'm guessing B. Correct answer. <laughs> You're well on your way to the first bite. Second question. The Guinness Book of World Records, we all know Guinness was a brewery, and that was the part of the name. Uh, why was the Guinness Book of World Records started? To settle trivia arguments in A, convents and monasteries, B, libraries and bookstores, or C, pubs and bars? I want to go with C, but I'll say A. Oh, uh, you've gotten further away from winning the uh, Irish soda bread. What famous Guinness Book of World Records record holder used to be right near here? In fact, just over your shoulder. Am I going to get what the Guinness choice Book of options? No, no, you just have to answer this one. I'm going to say you, Bob Burke. No, the, the Crawford Street Bridge of used course, to be the widest street bridge in the world. Well, course, too bad I you didn't that. say it. Well, I meant to say it. What ethnic group is the largest ethnic group in the state of Rhode Island? Italian. No, sir. The Italians are 18.7%. The Irish are 19%. Oh, I knew it was close. So you Italians, you know what you need to do today. The most Irish city or town in Rhode Island is? Oh, I was going to say Pawtucket. No, not the bucket. It is the little town of Kenyon, 36%. Followed by, where do you think I, uh, Providence is on the list? 50th. 55th. Oh! With 10.5%. And the great city of Newport. Number you, eight. You're right! <laughs> there you go, who knew? With 23% Irish. This is the man, Bob. Thank you, my you've friend. You've won the soda bread. I'm not interested in soda bread that you've touched. Have a happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Back to you.